They can live in quite a few uh, locations, unfortunately, and um, they can lodge and remain in the human host for very long periods of time. Since 2019, when someone says the word parasite, I usually immediately think of the Bong Joon-ho masterpiece rather than the thousands and thousands of parasites that actually live on our Earth. From parasites that can brainwash its host into dangerous situations, all the way to an actual man-eating parasite. On today's top 10 list, I'll be covering just a few of the craziest parasites. Parasites. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Tinea solium. Tinea solium is also known as the pork tapeworm. This parasite infects humans when a human ingests the parasite's eggs that contain infective larvae. After being ingested, the eggs travel to the intestine, which is where they are broken down. The infective larvae are released, and since they are in the intestine, they have easy access to enter and exit the bloodstream. This means that they can travel to where they feel comfiest in your body and pick a place to settle into its tissue and develop fluid-filled cysts. The biggest issue comes when they cross the blood-brain barrier and get into your central nervous system. This results in a condition called neurocystocercosis, which causes seizures. It is actually one of the most dangerous central nervous system parasite infections in the world. It is also very difficult to diagnose because there really aren't a lot of symptoms that are specific to this exact infection. In our number nine spot today, we have Nagleria fowleri. Nagleria fowleri is more commonly known as brain-eating amoeba and for a pretty fair reason. This parasite is single-celled and thrives in warm bodies of water. It can enter the human body when water that contains the amoeba enters the nose. It will then travel from there via the olfactory nerves and within a few days symptoms will begin to present themselves. This parasite can cause a brain infection known as meningoencephalitis which can cause severe brain inflammation. Symptoms will start with a fever, a headache, some nausea and vomiting, and a stiff neck. Usually though, the symptoms will progress into lack of attention, loss of balance, seizures, hallucinations. This parasite will most likely put the host into a coma and almost 100% of people who have been infected have lost their lives. In our number eight spot today, we have Cryptostrongylus pilomi, also known as hidden lungworm, is a microscopic roundworm that is found in the blood. It is one of the parasites that is hard to detect though because it doesn't have a lot of symptoms that are specific to it and it can also affect multiple organs, which will of course all react differently. One of the scariest parts of this parasite is that it can secrete biological molecules which can damage the functions of your brain. Because of the difficulty in diagnosing this parasite, it is very possible that there are different subtypes of it that exist, but just haven't yet been identified. In our number seven spot today, we have Lulu. Lulu is a type of nematode worm that infects humans through fly bites. It has an easy time traveling throughout the human body and can do so for years. It travels through the tissues and can cause itching, swelling, and in most extreme cases, it can even cause brain damage. It is often called the eye worm because it is most easily detectable when it reaches the host's eye. This is because it can actually be seen, and unfortunately for the host, felt as well as it finds its home in the soft tissue below the cornea. This sounds horrifying, but I guess it's better to be able to detect it, and apparently once it is there, it is pretty easy to remove with a little anesthetic. Even still though, I am certainly not envious of anyone who has had to go through that. In our number six spot today, we have Wolbachia. Wolbachia is a parasite that simply just does not like men. This bacteria is passed on to the host's offspring through egg cells, so organisms that cannot reproduce are essentially useless to them. When they infect a host, if they find out that the host cannot create an offspring, they'll either kill the host or when possible, they will change the sex of the host so that they can reproduce. The good thing about Wolbachia is that for now, they aren't able to manipulate humans and only have luck with insects and worms, but the world is always changing, so who knows what could happen. In our number five spot today, we have Vandelia serosa. Vandalia serosa is a very tiny eel-like parasitic fish. These guys feed on other fish by swimming into their gills where they begin drinking their blood, which gave them the nickname vampire fish. Vampire fish can also enter the human body through any orifice it finds, and it will drink human blood as well. They have backwards facing spines, so they will lodge themselves wherever they enter the body. After filling up on blood, they usually end up passing away there, but they are bloated from their meals. 
This means that surgery will be required in order to remove it, and depending on where it ended up, this surgery has varying degrees of difficulty. In our number four spot today, we have Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii is called the mind control bug because it actually has the ability to brainwash its hosts. It normally infects rodents and affects their brains and causes them to not be afraid of cats. Of course, this makes it extremely easy for the cats to now prey on the infected rodent. Now, the bug can reproduce in the cat until it is passed, and now it is ready to be ingested by the next unsuspecting rodent. This is the most common transmission, but it has been detected in humans who have eaten raw or undercooked meat. It of course doesn't have the same effect on humans, but it does cause some strange behavior. The most notable one is that it can severely slow a human's reaction time. Apparently, a human infected with this parasite is two to three times more likely to be involved in a car accident, which is of course terrible and extremely dangerous. In our number three spot today, we have Plasmodium. Most of us have heard of malaria considering there are around 200 million cases of it every year. Malaria is transmitted by mosquitoes, and while nowadays there are treatments for it, it still claims around 400,000 lives a year. Now, you may be wondering why I am talking about malaria since this is a list of parasites. Well, as it turns out, while most people believe malaria is a virus or a bacteria, it is actually the disease that results from the infection of a single-celled plasmodium. There are both treatments for the illness as well as preventative medicines that can help prior to exposure, but there unfortunately is no cure or vaccine. In our number two spot today, we have the Australian paralysis tick. The Australian paralysis tick is different from other parasites on this list for obvious reasons. Ticks are considered ectoparasites since they wreak havoc on their hosts from the outside outside of the body, while most others need to be inside the body. There are of course different kinds of ticks that can transmit different diseases, such as Lyme disease, but with these kinds of ticks, the transmission of disease is not actually the tick's goal, which is why we are here talking specifically about the Australian paralysis tick. These ticks purposefully secrete a neurotoxin that causes paralysis. This can be especially dangerous depending on the different areas that the tick paralyzes, because it has the ability to paralyze the lungs, which which of course could be very bad. The good news is that once the tick is removed, the effects of the toxin should wear off completely. I thought when I get the chance to go to Australia, my only worries would be the spiders and snakes, but I just guess I'll add this tick to the list. In our number one spot today, we have Cochleomia hominivorax. This one is much more commonly referred to as a man-eating screwworm, which is both a horrific and accurate description of what the larvae of this fly does. This process starts when a female fly of this species lays usually around 100 eggs in an open wound. This generally happens to livestock, but it can happen to any warm-blooded mammal, which of course includes humans. Within a day, the eggs that were laid will hatch into maggots, which is honestly so gross I can barely handle it. The maggots will then eat away at the flesh so that they can continue to bury themselves deeper into the host. They will go through muscle, blood vessels, and nerves, and the longer they go, the bigger they get. The good news is that there is a low fatality rate for an infected host, but of course they have to deal with the pain of being literally eaten alive, as well as the fact that there is a huge risk of infection, which of course comes with its own slew of problems. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Now I'm going to be shouting out some comments from my video, Top 10 Dark Hidden Messages in Country Music. Our first comment today comes from Alahe Rose. I'm sorry, I don't think I said that right. Thanks for doing this list. I love country. Also, thanks for introducing me to Drink a Beer. Yes, it's such a good song. I love Luke Bryan and it really is such a beautiful story. So I'm really glad you like it. BK says, this list is awesome. You should do a second one on this because there are loads of country songs that are dark. That is so true. When I was researching for that video, I was kind of surprised to see a lot of country songs are really, really dark. Tori Richards said, loved these, but now I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, Tori, I get that. I get that. But then you just have to listen to Drink a Beer by Luke Bryan and everything will be a-OK. -okay. That's all the comments I am shouting out for today's comment shout out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Neurosis to sarcosis. Neurosis to sarcosis. Nagleria fowleri. Nagleria. Okay. This parasite can cause a brain infection known as meningo <laughs> meningoencephalitis. 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 Cryptostrongylus pulmoni. 
That's not helpful. Cryptostrongylus pulmoni. Cryptostrongylus pulmoni. Okay. In our number eight spot today, we have Cryptostrongylus pulmoni. <laughs> Cryptostrongylus. Vandelia serosa. Oh, that was pretty close. Cochleomyo hominivorax. Cochleom. Co I think I butchered that. Um, I'm not even gonna try and say it again. 